Hi there, and thanks for joining us as always for the weekly wrap up for this Friday, October 25th, 2024. Thanks for tuning in. And if you are new to the podcast, as always, please do like, subscribe, and share, and get this out to those of your friends and followers who are seeking the truth so that they can be receiving the knowledge that you're being afforded every week. Okay, this week's shows, we had a great lineup. We had the one and only Mr. Nick Benyamin, where we did a presentation for him on the Global Reset. David Mahoney, who's always a joy. Denise Bolin, we hadn't had her in a while. We're looking forward to uh, seeing her again, having her back in November. Uh, SG Anon, always great to get cogent information, advice from him. And also did a special podcast geared towards the faith community, the church community of America, uh, imploring them to vote for President Trump in this seminal time in history. So you'll be seeing that sometime later today. Uh, next week, we just have Bill Holter to round out the month and then an exciting new lineup for November, which we will mention next week. Now let's get to the headline news. <clears throat> the United States Securities Exchange Commission's latest appeal in this case against Ripple does not pose a challenge to the court's ruling that XRP is not a security. On October 16th, the SEC filed a Form C civil appeal with a pre-argument statement against certain aspects of the court's summary judgment in favor of the defendants in its XRP rulings. Ripple's chief legal officer, <clears throat> Stuart Adult, Altoy, commented on the SEC's appeal on X, emphasizing that the SEC's Form C does not appeal uh, on the ruling that XRP is not a security. The decision stands as the law of the land. Adertoy stated, adding that Ripple is preparing to count its own, file its own Form C next week, which many of you know by now, they did file a counterclaim and the writing is on the wall for the demise of Gary Gensler's career. Hundreds of jobs have been put at risk after a brewer announced plans to, quote, restructure its workforce in order to ensure the future of the firm. <clears throat> Staff at Green King in Barry St. Edmund, Suffolk, and its offices in Burton-on-Trent, Staffordshire, are said to be affected by changes to its central support functions. The brewer said the shakeup, which could see more than 200 jobs lost, was necessary in order for the company to compete and thrive in these challenging times. Meta layoffs strike employees across the board to better align with its goals. Publication report states the company has issued layoff notices to employees working on Instagram, WhatsApp, and uh, Reality Labs. Uh, unfortunately, the exact number of impacted personnel of Meta is unknown. Meta spokesperson David Arnold informed The Verge that the company is making changes to ensure resources are aligned with long-term strategies. Turkey strikes Iraq, Syria after attack on defense company near Ankara. Turkey's Air Force has struck Kurdish targets in Iraq and Syria in apparent retaliation for an attack on key state-run defense company that killed five people and wounded more than 20. The Ministry of National Defense said that targets were destroyed <clears throat> excuse me, in the aerial offensive on Wednesday without providing details on specific locations. So you can see that this is ramping up with Israel for the ultimate event we are waiting for that will affect both Iraq and the whole of the Middle East. Factory closes after a century with 300 job losses. A factory has shut down uh, 300 jobs after more than a century of manufacturing. SKF began production in Luton. In 1911, under the name Skeffel Ball Bearing Company and was the firm's first site outside of Sweden, the closure was confirmed in October 2023, with it being finalized at the end of the year. Huge truck rental company Fluid Trucks Parent Fluid Market filed for Chapter 11, facing a class action lawsuit dating back to spring of 2024. Uh, the, it's due to weaker demand and inability to control expenses adequately to offset a shortfall. Fluid Market filled its petition on October 16th in U.S. Bankruptcy Court, the District of Delaware, <clears throat> excuse me, seeking to sell substantially all of its assets in order to enable the company to continue to function through the remainder of the year. Struggling New York Community Bank Corps said on Friday it is cutting 700 jobs at its Flagstar subsidiary as it tries to return to profitability after being rescued by in investors earlier this year. The bank said the cuts amount to roughly 8% of its headcount. It's also selling its mortgage servicing business in order to mortgage company Mr. Cooper, which will mean trimming another 1,200 employees from its payroll. Bye Bye Baby announced on Monday it would be shuttering its 10 remaining stores by the end of the year. It will become an online-only retailer. This difficult decision comes after listening closely to the customers and partners. Remaining stores will begin closing sales on October 18th, 
and all sales will be final after that. Gift cards are still being redeemed in stores until October 31st. Former Abercrombie and Finch CEO Mike Jeffries was arrested in Florida facing sex trafficking related charges, a spokesman for federal prosecutors in the Eastern District of New York told CNBC. Two of Jeffries' associates, Matthew Smith <clears throat> of West Palm Beach, Florida, and James Jacobson of Wisconsin, have also been charged in connection with the case. Criminal case comes a year after Abercrombie was sued for allegedly turning a blind eye to sex conduct, miscon sexual misconduct conducted by Jeffries. Harvey Weinstein has been diagnosed with bone cancer, a source close to the incarcerated producer tells CNN. Weinstein's specific diagnosis is chronic myeloid leukemia, a form of cancer in bone marrow. Added he is undergoing treatment at, uh, at said hospital and uh, more details to be announced. Denny's is closing uh, 150 restaurants over the next year and the 71 year old diner chain is mulling a major change to its operating hours. 50 locations are set to close by the end of 2024, while remaining 100 will shutter in 2025. Denny's announced in an earnings call on Tuesday, which amounts to a tenth of its restaurants leaving 1,375 locations once completed. Sherry's Cafe and Pies, an iconic chain of 24-hour family restaurants and home to numerous lottery machines, abruptly closed all of its Oregon locations on October 20th, according to multiple sources. Uh, KGW confirmed that the chain's closure after obtaining an email that Sherry's parent company, CEO Sam Borgesi, sent to the Oregon Lottery. <clears throat> Apparently, Sherry's was a big source of revenue for said lottery. An iconic family-run pizza restaurant is closing its doors after more than 80 years after Victory Pig Pizza, a favorite among local families and college students, was founded in 1942 by Italian immigrant grandparents of current owner uh, Richard Ciccoli. Another shipping company, the U.S. Logistics Solutions, which was owned by private firm, equity firm, the Ten Oaks Group, shut down operations, laying off employees on June 21st, filing for Chapter 7. Uh, the California-based trucking company Flex Intermodals Authority to operate was revoked by the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, forcing the company to shut down operations. <clears throat> One of the leading manufacturers of wheel and wheel products for commercial truck and trailers, Accurad, on October 9th filed for Chapter 11, and Accurad and its 15 affiliates filed for the petition in U.S. Bank US Bankruptcy Court for the District of Delaware after facing significant headwinds from the lingering effects of COVID-19. On the debtor's business, operating difficulties, business integration, and challenges along with supply chain disruption were factors in the company filing for Chapter 11. Now, here are the latest updates for precious metals and oil as of the time of this broadcast. Gold is up $2,746.90. Silver holding steady at $34.12. You'll, you'll note that uh, a couple days ago, it hit an all-time high of over $35. <clears throat> Rent crude holding steady as well, $75.18. Now, here are the latest deaths and resignations. CVS Health CEO Karen Lynch has stepped down with company shares down 19% this year after the national chain was struggling. Lynch will be replaced by David Joyner, who will attempt to steer the healthcare giant through a worsening environment of rising costs. CVS cut its financial expectations for the third time in August, with all major pharmacy chains attempting to navigate a drastically changed landscape, facing competition online and elsewhere. Jeff Schultz, who has served as Chief Strategic Officer and Chief Business Officer of Paramount Global Streaming Division, is leaving the company at the end of the year. Schultz joined Paramount in 2019 as part of an acquisition of Pluto TV and was also a key executive on the leadership team that launched and grew the Paramount brand. Ms. Marshak became the central figure <clears throat> in a flurry over speculation of the Rockefeller's final hours, <clears throat> as well as the nature of the relationship between the aspiring journalist and as a patriarch from one of the country's most powerful families. Ms. Marshak, who died on October 7th, excuse me, October 2nd in Sacramento at the age of 70, kept her side of the story tightly for more than four decades as a guardian of the mysterious footnote in American politics. Her silence, however, also left room for conjecture in books, articles, and pop culture over whether she and the married Rockefeller were romantically involved. Former Iron Maiden singer Paul Diano has died at age 66. Michael Newman, best known for his starring role as Mike Newman on Baywatch has died at the age of 68. 
<clears throat> Matt Felker, his close friend, after Baywatch moment in the Sun Director, confirmed his passing on Sunday, October 20th, telling people he died from heart complications. Joff Capes, a three-time Olympics competitor for Great Britain in the shot put, has died at the age of 75. The Lincolnshire-born athlete featured in Munich in 1972, the 76 Montreal Games, four years later in Moscow, while he also won a gold for Britain twice, the Commonwealth Games, and on a further two occasions at the European Indoor Championships, all during the 1970s. Julia Hawkins, an age group world record holder in the sprints, died on Tuesday, October 22nd in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The 100-meter star known as the Hurricane among her peers was 108. Hawkins' daughter, Margaret Matins, confirmed her death in the New York Times. <clears throat> she said her mother arranged to donate her body to the Pennington Biomedical Research Center at LSU University. A Kentucky state senator has died one month after a freak accident in which he fell into a swimming pool while riding on a lawnmower. Johnny L. Turner, 76, died Tuesday evening, Republican Kentucky State Senate Pro President Robert Stivers announced. For most of our time covering the Texas Rangers, players came and went with five different managers running the team. Even the ballpark changed. Wanda Williams, however, remained a constancy as a friendly face at the ballpark. The Rangers' longtime media dining room director died on Monday at the age of 73. She had been battling a deteriorating health for several years. <clears throat> a beloved figure in the South African motorsport, Willie Hepburn, has passed away at the age of 82. Hepburn's death was the result of natural causes occurring at his home in Bedford View, Johannesburg. His passing marks the end of an era for motorsport in South Africa. <clears throat> According to a report, another participant in the last Dodgers-Yankees World Series has passed away. Author and journalist Jeff Perlman relayed the sad news about pitcher Rudy May on his TikTok account Wednesday. May was 80 years old, although the cause of death has not been disclosed, according to a Montreal Exposed historian Danny Gallagher, may have been suffering allegedly from diabetes. Evelyn Stoops, the mother of Kentucky head coach Mark Stoops and Kentucky linebacker coach Mike Stoops has passed away. University of Kentucky football posted a tribute online to Evelyn, who passed away this morning. Mike Stoops broke the news through social media on Wednesday afternoon. Texas resident Elizabeth Harris, the oldest known living person in America, has died. <clears throat> the super centurion died Tuesday at age 115. At the time of her death, Francis was the third oldest known living person in the world, the organization reported, and among the 21st longest living people in U.S. history. Baltasar Yushka, last Iceman of Ecuador's highest peak, dies at the age of 80. A member of the 1974 World Series Oakland Athletics who went on to leave a long legacy as a coach has died, Galen Pitts passed away on October 10th, according to his death notice in the Baxter Bulletin. He was 78. <clears throat> John Kinsel Sr., one of the last remaining Navajo code talkers who sent coded messages for the U.S. military, during World War II, through their tribe's unwritten languages died, he was 107. Both the Navajo Nation and the U.S. Marines confirmed his death on Saturday. Former legendary Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher and broadcaster Fernando Valenzuela has died, the team announced on Tuesday night. He was 63. Baseball icon played 17 seasons from 1980 to 1980, excuse me, 91, and then 93 to 97. Although he played for six different teams, he spent the majority of his time with the Dodgers, in L.A., he became the first player to win the Rookie of the Year and Cy Young in the same season. <clears throat> Janusz Oleszynak, the distinguished Polish, Polish pianist and teacher who performed the piano parts in the Oscar-winning film 2002, The Pianist, has died of 72. His family confirmed on Monday he passed away on Sunday from a heart attack. In a statement, they said that he brought extraordinary musical sensitivity, especially within the interpretations of the music of Frederick Chopin or Chopin, which brought him international acclaim. Fatula Gulen has died at the age of 83. Turkish media reported on Monday. Gulen was an Islamic preacher accused by Ankara of organizing the failed coup attempt between President Recep Tayyip Erdogan in 2016. The cleric had been residing in the U.S. Uh, media associated with Gulen reported that he passed away on Sunday evening at a hospital in Pennsylvania due to circulatory system failure. A grandfather convicted of violent disorder during the summer riots has died in prison. Peter Lynch, 61, was serving two years 
and eight months in jail after he pleaded guilty to being part of the unrest at the Holiday Inn Express in uh, Rotherham on August 4th. French actress Christine Boisson, who got her big screen break as a 17-year-old in Emmanuel, has died at the age of 68 in Paris. Boisson had just left school and was still a minor when just Jacqueline cast her in the 1974 erotic classic as the sexually adventurous teenager Marie Ange, who introduced Emmanuel, played by Sylvia Christel, to the shady libertine figure of Mario. Legendary Colombian accordionist Adigio Cuadrado had passed away on Monday on, at the age of 71. The musician who had been hospitalized with pneumonia was a household name in his country and gained international acclaim for playing alongside people like Carlos Vives, Shakira, and many more. Patty McGee, first woman's, first woman's pro skateboarder, dies at 79. Miss McGee died on October 16th at 79. She went on to become the first women's professional skateboarder and a public ambassador for a sport that generated backlash from parents and elected officials concerning safety. A Peruvian priest who founded Liberation Theology, a movement advocating an active role for the Roman Catholic Church in fighting poverty and injustice, but reviled by some as Marxists has died, <clears throat> Father Gustavo Gutierrez, was 96 when he passed away on Tuesday in his hometown of Lima. Former Rep. Rick Nolan, a Democrat who represented different Minnesota congressional districts during two separate stints in office three decades apart, died Friday. His wife said he was 80. Mary Nolan said her husband suffered from heart issues and died at their home in Niswa. Paramedics were unable to revive him. He had been active until the end and was out campaigning for Democratic candidates on the Iron Range just last week. Lee Sang Duke, an elder brother of former President Lee Wing Bak and a former National Assembly Vice Speaker, died on Wednesday after a battle with chronic illness. His acquaintances said he was 89 years old. Lee had been suffering from a chronic disease and was hospitalized at Seoul National University, where he died. His acquaintances told <clears throat> Yon Hap News Agency over the phone. His memorial altar was set up at Asan Medical Center in North, excuse me, Southeastern Seoul. After first joining the legislature in 1998, he served six parliamentary terms as vice speaker from 2006 to 2008. Dick Pope dies, Oscar nominated cinematographer and longtime Mike Lay collaborator. He was 77. The British Society of Cinematographers confirmed the news on Tuesday with a statement that it is with our deep sadness that we've learned of our good friends passing. He had a reputation for being a wonderful collaborator and someone who's warm and genuine with which to work. Alan Sachs, the co-creator of Welcome Back Carter and co-creator of Disney Channel producer died. He was 81. Producer's wife, uh, talent agent Annette Van Duren tells Deadline he died Tuesday morning in New York City after his mantle cell lymphoma took an aggressive turn over the last few weeks. Yehuda Bauer, one of Israel's foremost Holocaust scholars, dies. Bauer shaped the way people around the world study and learn about the Holocaust. He died in Jerusalem at the age of 98. John Nady, the founder of Wireless Revolution in Rock, dies at the age of 79. Broadway legend Mimi Hines has died. On Tuesday, lawyer Mark Sendroff announced that the Canadian actress had passed away uh, at the previous day of natural causes at her home in Las Vegas. She was 91. A celebration of her life and career will be held to coincide with an upcoming unveiling of Heinz and her ex-husband, Phil Ford's star at the Palm Spring Walk of Fame in Palm Springs, California. Aaron Kaufman, who directed the documentary Superpower about the war in Ukraine, alongside Sean Penn, and was a longtime producing partner of Robert Rodriguez, has died. He was 51. <clears throat> Kaufman died Thursday in Las Vegas. Verdi Productions president Chad Verdi told The Hollywood Reporter on Sunday. Reports indicate that Kaufman died of an apparent heart attack. Mary Rachel Broman, who with her husband Chester established one of New York's leaded, leading breeding and racing operations, passed away October 16th at the age of 88. The Bromans own and operate the Chesterton Farm in the tiny community on the same name in the heart of New York's Adirondacks Mountains. Couple was honored 
by the New York Thoroughbred Breeders Incorporated with the state's breeder of the year title eight times, most recently in 2022. Philip G. Zimbardo, the psychologist behind the controversial Stanford prison experiment that was intended to examine the psychological experiences of imprisonment has died, he was 91. Stanford University announced Friday that Zimbardo died October 14th at his home in San Francisco. A cause of death has not yet been provided. One of the country's premier college wrestling coaches, Arthur Bucky Maugen, who guided North Dakota University to four Division uh, II championships, passed away on October 15th, according to a story reported by the Minot Daily News. Maugen, who coached the Bison for 47 years from 1964 to 2011, passed away in West Fargo, North Dakota, per the obituary released by Hanson Runsfold Funeral Home in Fargo. <clears throat> A British athlete has died while competing in Costa del Sol triathlon. Mark Stokes, 57, collapsed as he was running during the competition in Tormelinos on Thursday. Mitzi Gaynor, the actor, singer, and dancer best known for her starring role in the 1958 film adaptation of Rodgers and Hammerstein musical South Pacific, has died. She was 93. Gaynor also had key roles in 1954 Irving Berlin musical, There's No Business Like Show Business, and the 1956 screwball comedy, The Birds and the Bees. Tony Ventrella, a longtime prominent part of the Seattle sports scene, has passed away. Ventrella passed away on Saturday night. Beach Grove Garden presenter Jim McCall has died at the age of 88. It has been announced. He hosted the BBC Scotland's gardening program since it began in 1978, retiring after 41 years on the screen in 2019. And that concludes the deaths and resignations. Now on to the commentary section. <clears throat> so I've learned a few axioms over the years, as you would imagine, and one of them is the following. In life, if you want to succeed and go higher, you can't soar with eagles if you're hanging around turkeys. So make sure that you're hanging with people that are ascending to the level that you are, and that has many different variations I'm sure you can interpret. And a verse that my big brother Carl has taught me over the years has, that has fermented and cemented itself quite well over these years Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to stand still. And these are additional verses that I want to provide on the backs of the message that I provided as a personal message to the um, church community, the event, you know, specifically the evangelical community in terms of getting out to vote this year and specifically for President Trump. And this is going to cover a, a myriad of issues from responsibility of voting Christians being involved in governmental affairs and politics, as many churches are incorrectly saying that you shouldn't be, the Bible speaks otherwise. And here's one example. It is the duty and responsibility of every Christian to vote and vote for leaders who promote Christian principles. Yes, God is sovereign and in control, but that does not mean we should do nothing to further his will. In 2024, sin's steely grip on this world is global as a transition is finalized. Much of our earth is suffering because of, because of godless leadership. Proverbs 28, 12. As born again believers, we strive to choose leaders who will be themselves led by our creator. First Samuel 12, 13 to 25. Candidates or proposals that violate the, Bi the Bible's commands on life, family, marriage, or faith should never be supported. Proverbs 14, 34. Christians should vote as spirit-led through prayer and God's word as you pour over your choices in the ballot. In America and in recent elections, 40% of Christians took that right for granted and did not vote. And another 20% of Christians are not even registered to vote. Voting is an opportunity to promote, protect, and preserve godly government. Passing up that opportunity means letting those who would denigrate the name of Christ have their own rule and reign within our lives. You see, folks, the leaders we elect or do nothing to remove have great influence over our freedoms. They can choose to protect our First Amendment or Second Amendment rights, religious freedom, bearing of arms, to spread the gospel, or they can restrict them. They can lead our nation towards righteousness or towards moral disaster. Again, Proverbs 14, verse 34. Honor before, uh, advisably, before November 5th. And as Christians, we need to stand up and follow our command to fulfill our civic duties. Matthew 22, 21. And that concludes the podcast for today's weekly wrap-up. As we have breaking news, as always, we will deliver it to you in as timely manner as possible. Thanks for listening, for following, and for your prayers. We appreciate it. Take care. God bless.